Gay thoughts. Why do we have them? Is it because A, boys have cute butts, B, boys are really fun to kiss, or C, surely anything must be better than my bitch wife? I think we all know the answer. In the last Total War Warhammer 3 video, in an effort to prove that I'm not gay, I set out to vassalize and subsequently marry every woman in the game. It wasn't worth it. Between the incessant nagging over me never doing the dishes and the constant whining about how I can never get it up unless Sigvald's in the room, I would say my marriage is going through a bit of a rough patch. While most couples would seek counseling, I have decided that the best way to fix my marriages is to brutally murder each of my wives with an axe. Who in the game is capable of such a feat, you may ask? Why none other than Scarbrand, a rage demon of corn with a one-track mind for spreading violence and bloodshed. Much like myself, he cares not if someone is a man or a woman, if they're being crushed to death by a steamroller, he's aroused. Today, we will be hunting down every female legendary lord in the game and systematically caving in their skulls. Will we succeed in becoming the ultimate misogynist? Or will the ladies girl boss me to an early grave? Only one way to know. Much like in real life, Scarbrand's starting position is exactly where you'd expect to find a 20 foot tall bloodthirsty demon, in the middle of Africa. Much like the last video, we will be hunting down every female legendary lord in the game. Though unlike last video, we will be doing it with Scarbrand personally. Also, just for clarification, if a woman is killed by a faction other than Scarbrand, I'm still counting that as a win. At that point, it's just bros being bros. Like all games of Warhammer, we started off our campaign by getting to know our neighbors. Turns out, my immediate neighbor is really just your average British man, and I responded accordingly to this information. To my utter surprise, the Brits didn't respond too well to me killing one of their armies and burning down their city, so they marched out to meet me in the field. Now, I know this toothy British British Ma looks intimidating, but it actually does very little to defend against being hit by a semi-truck moving at 200 miles per hour. After a few turns, Scarbrand had successfully salted and burned the lands of the British, and it was now time to turn our full attention to the real enemy, the French. The first woman on our list is Rapunz de... I don't know, some fucking French name. She lives off the northern coast of Africa and is neighbored by the Knights of Oregano. While they aren't on the list, they are French, so unfortunately, they had to die. I declared war on the Knights, sacked their capital, and then caught their army in an ambush. Auto Resolve said that I would lose five units in this battle, but after fighting the ambush, I actually only lost 37 men. Thank you, CA. Very cool. If you weren't aware, one of the primary mechanics of Scarbrand's faction is the ability to create blood host armies. When burning a city to the ground, you can choose to turn the local homeless population into an army of bloodthirsty demons. Using this mechanic, we converted the entire population of Xandri into a horde of demons and then marched on Rapunz. We absolutely slaughtered the garrison in her capital and sacked the city. Now, at this point, Rapunz had two armies and three cities under her control, and while I had just sacked her capital, I imagine she was still feeling pretty confident about her position in the world. However, much like a toddler in a stroller, she was but mere moments from being pushed into oncoming traffic. I pressed end turn and she marched her two armies out to fight me, and thus began the turn of seven battles. Her armies were vast, but unfortunately for her, I'd developed a bit of a parasocial relationship with chopping French people to death with an axe. Thanks to a banner of regeneration, Scarbrand is virtually unkillable, and after a very grueling battle, we had managed to decimate both of the French armies. After the battle, we marched on one of the two surviving French armies, which was somehow supported by a garrison that was back at full strength again. Once again, thank you CA, very cool. We killed the garrison on spawn and finished wiping the severely wounded army, then turned and raised the French capital. At this point, I should probably mention Scarbrand's other primary mechanic. Anytime he wins a battle or raises a city, he replenishes a substantial amount of his movement speed. After raising the capital, I turned around and auto-resolved away the second surviving French army, then marched on the town of Fyrus. We fought the battle for the town, once again pulverizing the weak and feminine French with our masculine, testosterone-filled bodies. I burned the town and marched on the final French holdout, the town of Kofer. However, I didn't have quite enough movement speed to reach the town, so I had to utilize one final trick up my sleeve. See, every few turns, I can summon a small army of demons to attack Scarbrand. I summoned this army and quickly destroyed it, which gave Scarbrand enough movement speed to reach the town. Fight the battle for it and then occupy it. 
Just like that, in a single turn, we had completely destroyed Lady Rapons, crossed the first name off our list, and ensured that there was one less woman in the world. This may have cost me 50% of the units in my army, but in the words of Benjamin Franklin, I'd rather a billion loyal men die than leave a single French person alive. Now that there were no French people within my field of view, actively causing me stress, I took some time to improve Scarbrand's army, then headed back east to go deal with Cleopatra. Between her and I was what appeared to be your average Romanian man. The only reason a worm exists is so that bigger, more important animals could eat something. I moved into his lands and captured the Black Pyramid of Nagash. Desperate to prove that he was the alpha male, he immediately marched on me with four armies, and thus began the single largest battle of this campaign. I was faced with a literal horde of undead, and outnumbered four to one. And while those are daunting odds, they were greatly improved by the fact that Manfred here had clearly just suffered some sort of traumatic brain injury, and decided to fly right up to Scarbrand, who almost instantly killed him. Do you still feel like an alpha? With Manfred dead, the strongest vampire unit was taken off the field, and we were able to hold the city by funneling the undead into various choke points. Normally I despise city battles in Warhammer 3, but something about a bunch of heavily armored men standing shoulder to shoulder cutting through a horde of undead was very satisfying. After a very decisive victory and an absolutely insane KDA, we carved a path through Manfred's land as we headed towards Cleopatra. She exists just beyond this mountain range, but considering these mountains were now held by the dwarves, I was quite suspicious that she may already be dead. I pushed through the dwarvish lands and confirmed my suspicions. Two down, eleven to go. Fantastic. I sacked and raised a few dwarven cities while I was here, and then I began pushing north. My next target was Miao Ying in China, which is a considerable distance away. Much like a certain historical Chinese hero of mine, I began the Long March, sacking and raising cities as I went. Now, generally up until this point, I've made absolutely zero effort to defend my empire. However, this strategic decision proved to be extremely detrimental when the now fully recovered Manfred walked up to my capital and occupied it. With that city gone, I no longer had any means to replace my high tier units units should they die, and decided, before I marched on Cathay, I should probably find a new capital. I settled on Karak 8 Peaks, which was currently being held by Skarsnik and his armies of Twitter users. Ugh. I declared war and started fighting my way there, when I got a notification about the crusty pirate lady being killed by the AI. Well, that's three. I spent a few turns committing acts of domestic terrorism to gather a large blood host and then marched on Karak 8 Peaks. I ought to resolve the battle for the city and... Remember gentlemen, you might be only one spin away from a payout this big. Keep gambling. I captured the city, fought a massive battle against Skarsnik in the defense of it, and then began recruiting a second army to defend my new capital. Now that I had a defensible base of operations and a substantial amount of wealth, Scarbrand was free to resume his holy pilgrimage to murder a Chinese woman. After traveling for what felt like an eternity, we arrived in China. Wasting no time, I moved in to engage the Chinese in battle and then turned to attack a nearby settlement. Oh, oh God, it's a minor settlement battle. <laughs> Fuck, I think. I think I'm gonna be sick. I raised the town to the ground and, oh hey, looks like Valky is dead. That's another one. Who knew murdering women would be so easy? I continued fighting my way north until I reached the Chinese capital of Nanjing and, much like the Japanese, did absolutely nothing wrong at all when I occupied the city. After my completely consensual encounter with Nanjing, I continued my rampage across China, burning cities and creating blood hosts until finally, the Chinese marched out in force to meet me in the field. The Chinese set up a defensive line in the hills at the edge of the map, and while their army was strong, they were unfortunately ill-equipped to handle my superior tactics of infantry blobbing and right-clicking Scarbrand onto masses of units. We wiped the three attacking armies, and systematically began conquering and raising their cities to the ground. I don't know why I can say this, I don't know when it happened, but it looks like Kislev's gone. Every woman that dies off screen improves my mental state just a little bit. After several turns, we had managed to push Cathay back to the city of Haichi, where Miao Ying herself stood to make a valiant last stand. We fought the battle and finally settled the age old debate of who would win a Chinese woman in a dragon costume or your average alcoholic father. With that battle won and the city conquered, a wave of relief washed over me. Miao Ying had just one town left and then she would be dead, and my time here in the east would finally come to a close. 
<laughs> this is Miao Ying's brother, and things have clearly not been going well for him in his home life, as he has just decided to commit suicide by cop. Like a pit bull on a playground, I was an unstoppable force, raising cities and killing armies left and right. In response, Zhao Ming sent his sister out to fight me again and again. Clearly, he was taunting me. I'll kill you. Oh look, Sisters of Twilight died. Man, I'm really doing none of the heavy lifting, huh? Over the next 25 turns, I systematically decimated the lands of the Chinese until finally, on turn 139, I killed their final city, obliged Zhao Ming's death wish, crossed Miao Ying off the list, and brought this nightmare in the east to a close. With my blood pressure at an all-time high, I decided the best way to cut loose was with my favorite pastime, the slaughter of the French. So naturally, my next target was the Fey Enchantress. I made my way back to Africa and set sail for Western Europe. However, much to my disappointment, as I sailed along the coast of France, it became clear to me that the Fey Enchantress was already dead. Well, if I can't take all this pent-up frustration out on the French, I guess I'll settle for the next best thing, the Twinks of Femboy Island. Switching targets to Alariel, I sailed to Ulthuan and captured the city of... No fucking clue. It was around this time that I decided it was high time to upgrade Scarbrand's army. Over the next few turns, I recruited a host of chosen Cornic warriors, several blood crushers of corn, a small herd of minotaurs, two bloodthirsters, this thing, that thing, two dipshits cranking their motherfucking hogs, and of course, Scarbrand himself. With my new fighting force, I pounded into the femboys, thrusting deep into their central ring. I captured and raised the cities in my path as I fought my way to Alariel's capital. Otto resolved the battle and captured the city. It appears the Dark Elves were also at war with the mother of all twinks, and with our combined effort, it took only a few turns to slam Alariel's head into the pavement and cross yet another woman off our list. With Alariel dead, I took a moment to plan my next move. Given the strength of Malekith, I accurately figured that both Fat Amy and the spokeswoman for Alzheimer's disease were dead, leaving just Mommy Marathi and the ever-gorgeous Sigbald as the only two women left. I mean, seriously. Just look at her. Women want to be her. Men want to be with her. And I have been pegged by her. I decided to take on Mommy Marathi first, as she held some cities on Ulthuan. I declared war and quickly kicked Marathi off of Femboy Island before sailing for North America. However, as soon as Scarbrand embarked into the water, he was attacked by three Dark Elf armies. A horde of edgy twinks poured over the hillside as our men steeled themselves for their last stand. Our units fought valiantly, but one by one, our great beasts were felled, and the spirits of our soldiers faltered and broke. Marathi had managed to kill my army with sheer overwhelming numbers, yet she failed to consider one crucial detail. How was she going to kill Scarbrand? While my army crumpled and died, this high-functioning autistic man kept doing what he does best, killing everything in his path with an axe. For the next 20 minutes, Scarbrand systematically killed off and routed every single unit in all three armies, virtually by himself. With the Dark Elf forces decimated, Scarbrand made landfall, rebuilt his armies, and one by one raised Dark Elf cities to the ground, completely unopposed. Unable to stop the overwhelming strength that was Scarbrand and his blood hosts, it wasn't long before Mommy Marathi met her untimely demise, and I crossed the second to last woman off my list. Now guys, I gotta address the elephant in the room. In the last video, I got loads of comments seemingly claiming that Sigvald is not a woman. And I gotta ask, are you stupid? I mean, just look at her. If that isn't the body of a beautiful woman, then I'm gay. With a heavy heart, I made my way north and marched on Sigvald's cities, conquering them one by one. I quickly swept across her lands until finally, in the British Isles, I had one final siege battle, the last bastion of womankind. Sigvald's soldiers fought valiantly, but they were unable to overcome my will, my indomitable drive to murder every woman. With the battle's conclusion came the end of Sigvald. With that, I'd done it. Every single woman was dead and buried. While only five may have been by my hand, I'd still consider what I did here today very impressive. And now, as I bring this video to a close, I am free to sit back and enjoy the sounds of silence.
Hey guys, sorry this one took so long, but I hope it was well worth the wait. This campaign took 26 hours, and I fought over 53 battles, so I really hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to this month's Patreon supporters, Bob the Bobber, Disaster of Steel, The Stranger, Reds, Doc, Lady Corvia, Hobbs, Luke Strobel, and Joaquin Prieto. As always, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you in the next video.